A subgroup of a group G is a subset H of G that is also a group, which means that H needs to be associative, it needs to have an identity, it needs to have inverses, and it needs to be closed. However, we don't have to prove all of those properties separately every single time that we want to prove something as a subgroup. There is a better way. Today, we'll prove the one-step subgroup test, which says if we have a non-empty subset of a group G, then H is a subgroup of G if AB inverse is in H whenever A and B are in H. This AB inverse wraps the need for closure under the operation and for closure of inverses into a single nice test. And after the proof, we'll do a quick exercise using this test to show something as a subgroup. I'll also leave links in the description to lessons on the other subgroup tests. And remember that what we're proving here is really an equivalent definition. To say that H is a subgroup of G is the same as saying this. So we can really just use this test to quickly establish H as a subgroup. If H is a subgroup of G, then it's obvious these conditions are true because that would mean H is a group. So if A and B are in H, well, B inverse has to be in H and so does the product AB inverse. So we just have to assume these conditions and prove that implies H is a subgroup. For starters, since G is a group, we already know that we have associativity. The operation in H is the same as that in G, so it is associative. Next, we'll prove that H has the identity. We'll take an arbitrary element of H, we know it's non-empty, so we can do that, and considering this property that AB inverse has to be in H whenever A and B are in H, let's say A equals X and B equals X. Well, that means that AB inverse, which equals X times X inverse, which equals the identity, has to be an element of H. Because again, anytime A and B are in H, AB inverse has to be in H. That's the condition of the one-step subgroup test. So if we set A and B both equal to this arbitrary element X, we get this, guaranteeing that the identity is in H. As for inverses, we use a similar trick. Say A is the identity, which we just proved is in H, and B equals the arbitrary element X. Then we know that the identity times x inverse, which equals x inverse, has to be an element of H. Again, that's just because any time A and B are in H, AB inverse has to be in H. And in this case, AB inverse is the inverse of the arbitrary element X. Finally, we have to show that H is closed under the group operation, so let's take two arbitrary elements, X and Y. We just proved that H contains inverses, so Y inverse is an element of H. So let's say A equals X and B equals Y inverse. Then again, AB inverse has to be an element of H. But what is AB inverse in this case? Well, in this case, AB inverse is X y inverse inverse, and the inverse of y inverse is y. So ab inverse is xy. Thus, if x and y are in h, we've shown that xy has to be in h also. Thus, establishing that h is closed under the operation, and that completes the proof. The one-step subgroup test is a valid way to show that a non-empty subset of a group is a subgroup. If this one condition holds that any time A and B are in H, then AB inverse is in H, the rest of the group properties follow. For our example, consider the multiplicative group of real numbers, that's what this is, and then the subset H consisting of all integer powers of 2. Certainly, H is non-empty because it contains infinitely many powers of 2. We're going to prove that H is a subgroup of G using the one-step subgroup test. So we'll take two arbitrary elements from H and show that AB inverse is in H also. So here are our two arbitrary elements, 2 to the n and 2 to the m. n and m are both integers. Note that 2 to the negative m 
is the inverse of 2 to the m because, of course, 2 to the m times 2 to the negative m is equal to 2 to the negative m times 2 to the m, which is the identity of 1. So then this element 2 to the n times 2 to the m inverse, which is what we want to show is in h, this is equal to 2 to the n times 2 to the minus m, which by our exponent rules is 2 to the n minus m. n and m are both integers, so n minus m is certainly an integer as well. But that means 2 to the n minus m, which we just showed above, is 2 to the n times 2 to the m inverse. This has to be an element of h. Thus, h is a subgroup of g by the one-step subgroup test. Once more, we just took two arbitrary elements from h, 2 to the n and 2 to the m, and showed that 2 to the n times 2 to the m inverse, which is 2 to the n minus m, also is an element of h, and thus h is a subgroup of g by the one-step subgroup test. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and check out my Abstract Algebra course and Abstract Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more.